Hi, Marl class. Welcome to another episode of Storytime with Mrs. Edwards. So today we are picking our new book. Um, I had a couple of suggestions and I've picked a book that is a bit shorter than the books we've been reading. And then afterwards we're going to, obviously pick another book, but um, it's quite exciting. And the kids here are very, very excited. They're all waving at you right now. Yeah, you can't see them, but they are waving, I promise. So, the book we are going to be reading now, can we have a drum roll please, everyone? Is oh, SEO Trot by Roald Dahl. Is everyone excited? If you're excited, go give me a holler. Holler! That's so funny. They're doing, um, they're colouring in lions as well at the same time. So, SEO Trot by Roald Dahl. Very exciting book about a tortoise. And I love it because my family have a tortoise and tortoises are amazing. And he's called Aubrey and he's amazing. So, you know, you're going to love this book. So, the blurb is, Mr. Hoppy really loves his neighbour, Mrs. Silver. And Mrs. Silver really loves her tortoise, Alfie. One day, Mrs. Silver asks Mr. Hoppy how to make Alfie grow. And suddenly, Mr. Hoppy knows the way to win her heart. With the help of a magical spell and some cabbage leaves, can Mr. Hoppy be happy at last? Oh, I'm so excited to read this. I don't think I've read this in about 15 years. Oh. Wait, that makes me really old. No, uh, scratch that. I haven't read it in about two years, because then I don't seem so old. Okay, ready? SEO Trot. Bye. Mr. Hoppy lived in a small flat high up in a tall concrete building. He lived alone. He had always been a lonely man, and now that he was retired from work, he was more lonely than ever. There were two loves in Mr. Hoppy's life. One was the flowers he grew on his balcony. They grew in pots and tubs and baskets, and in summer the little balcony became a riot of colour. Mr. Hoppy's second love was a secret he kept entirely to himself. Okay, there's some nice pictures in this book. The balcony immediately below Mr. Hoppy's, Hoppy's jutted out a good bit further from the building than his own. So Mr. Hoppy always had a fine view of what was going on down there. This balcony belonged to an attractive middle-aged lady called Mrs. Silver. Mrs. Silver was a widow who also lived alone. And although she didn't know it, it was she who was the object of Mr. Hoppy's secret love. He had loved her from his balcony for many years but he was a very shy man and he had never been able to bring himself to give her even the smallest hint of his love. Every morning, Mr Hoppy and Mrs Silver exchanged polite conversation, the one looking down from above, the other looking up, but that was as far as it ever went. The distance between their balconies might not have been more than a few yards, but to Mr Hoppy it seemed like a million miles. He longed to invite Mrs Silver up for a cup of tea and a biscuit, but every time he was about to form the words on his lips, his courage failed him. As I said, he was a very, very shy man. There's a balcony. Oh, sorry, I'm not showing the kids in the class. There you go. Sorry. It's only showing the camera. Oh, if only he kept telling himself. If only he could do something tremendous, like saving her life or rescuing her from a gang of armed thugs. If only he could perform some great feat that would make him a hero in her eyes. If only. The trouble with Mrs Silver was that she gave all her love to somebody else, and that somebody was a small tortoise called Alfie. Every day when Mr Hoppy looked over his balcony and saw Mrs Silver whispering endearments to Alfie and stroking his shell, he felt absurdly jealous. He wouldn't even have minded becoming a tortoise himself, if it meant Mrs. Silver stroking his shell each morning and whispering endearments into his ear. Can you see, guys? The coin? Alfie had been with Mrs. Silver for years and he lived on her balcony summer and winter. Planks had been placed around the sides of the balcony so that Alfie could walk out about without toppling over the edge. And in one corner, there was a little house into which Alfie would crawl every night to keep warm. When the colder weather came along in November, Mrs Silver would fill Alfie's house with dry hay and the tortoise would crawl in there and bury himself deep under the hay and go to sleep for months on end without food or water. This is called hibernating. In early spring, when Alfie felt the warmer weather through his shell, he would wake up and crawl very slowly out of his house onto the balcony and Mrs Silver would clap her hands with joy and cry out, Welcome back, my darling one! Oh, how I've missed you! It was
was at times like these that Mr. Hoppy wished more than ever that he could change places with Alfie and become a tortoise. Now we come to a certain bright morning in May when something happened that changed and indeed electrified Mr. Hoppy's life. He was leaning over his balcony rail watching Mrs. Silver serving Alfie his breakfast. Here's the heart of the lettuce for you, my lovely, she was saying. And here's a slice of fresh tomato and a piece of crispy lettuce, celery. Good morning, Mrs. Silver, Mr. Hoppy said. Alfie's looking well this morning. Isn't he gorgeous, Mrs. Silver said, looking up and beaming at him. Absolutely gorgeous, Mr. Hoppy said, not meaning it. And now, as he looked down at Mr. S Mrs. Silver's smiling face gazing up into his own, he thought for the thousandth time how pretty she was, how sweet and gentle and full of kindness, and his heart ached with love. Oh, his heart ached with love. Oh. I do so wish he would grow a little faster, Mrs. Silver was saying. Every spring when he wakes up from his winter sleep, I weigh him on the kitchen scales. And do you know that in all the 11 years I've had him, he's not gained more than three ounces. That's almost nothing. What does he weigh now? Mr. Hobby asked her. Just 13 ounces, Mrs. Silver answered. About as much as a grapefruit. Yes, well, tortoises are very slow growers, Mr. Ho Hoppy said solemnly. But they can live for a hundred years. I know that. Mrs. Silver said, but I do so wish he would grow just a little bit bigger. He's such a tiny wee fellow. He seems just fine as he is, Mr. Hoppy said. No, he's not just fine, Mrs. Silver cried. Try to think how miserable it must make him feel to be so titchy. Everyone wants to grow up. You really would love him to grow bigger, wouldn't you? Mr. Hoppy said, and even as he said it, his mind suddenly went click. And an amazing idea came rushing to his head. Of course I would, Mrs. Silver cried. I'd give anything to make it happen. Why, I've seen pictures of giant tortoises that are so huge people can ride on their backs. If Alfie were to see those, he'd turn green with envy. Mrs. Silver. Mr. Hoppy's mind was spinning like a flywheel. Here, surely, was his big chance. Grab it, he told himself. Grab it quick. Mrs. Silver, he said, I do actually happen to know how to make tortoises grow faster, if that's really what you want. You do, she cried. Oh, please tell me, am I feeding him the wrong things? I worked in North Africa once, Mr. Hobby said. That's where all these tortoises in England come from. And a Bedouin, tri a Bedouin, Bedouin tribesman told me the secret. <gasps> tell me! cried Mrs. Silver. I beg you to tell me, Mr. Hoppy. I'll be your slave for life. When he heard the words, your slave for life, a little happy shiver of excitement swept, th swept through Mr. Hoppy. Wait there, he said. I'll have to go in and write something down for you. In a couple of minutes, Mr. Hoppy was back on the balcony with a sheet of paper in his hand. I'm going to lure it to you on a bit of string, he said. Or it might blow away. Here it comes. Mrs. Silver caught the paper and held it up in front of her. This is what she read. SEO trot, SEO trot, teg regib regib. Emok no, SEO trot, walk poo, foot poo, touch poo. Nerps poo, walp poo, lose poo. Egg rock, elg zug, futz plug. Tup no taff, SEO trot, tup no taff, teg no, teg no, el bog doof. Does it mean? she asked. Is it another language? It's tortoise language, Mr. Hoppy said. Tortoises are very backwards creatures. Therefore, they can only understand words that are written backwards. That's obvious, isn't it? I suppose so, Mrs. Silver said, bewildered. SEO trot is simply tortoise spelled backwards, Mr. Hoppy said. Look at it. So it is, Mrs. Silver said. The other words are spelled backwards too, Mr. Hobby said. If you turn them round into human language, they simply say, Tortoise, tortoise, get bigger, bigger. Come on, tortoise, grow up, puff up, shoot up. Spring up, blow up, swell up. Gorge, guzzle, stuff, gulp. 
Put on fat, tortoise, put on fat. Get on, get on, gobble food. Mr. Silver ex Mrs. Silver examined the magic words on the paper more closely. I guess you're right, she said. How clever, but there's an awful lot of poos in it. Are they something special? Poo is a very strong word in any language, Mr. Hoppy said, especially with tortoises. Now that you have... Now what you have to do, Mrs. Silver, is hold Alfie up to your face and whisper these words to him three times a day, morning, noon and night. Let me hear you practice them. Very slowly and stumbling a little over the strange words, Mrs. Silver read the whole message out loud in tortoise language. Not bad, Mr. Hobby said, but try to get a little more expression into it when you say it to Alfie. If you do it properly, I'll bet you anything you like that in a few months' time he'll be twice as big as he is now. I'll, I'll try it, Mrs. Silver said. I'll try anything. Of course I will. But I can't believe it'll work. You wait and see, Mr. Hobby said, smiling at her. We're going to have to stop there for today. Thank you for listening to another t episode of Storytime with Mrs. Edwards. And tomorrow I'll see you for your second episode of SEO Trot. Bye-bye. <laughs>